For Comedy Hype News, I'm Tatiana LaJoy. In 1999, Chris Rock was one of the biggest stand-up comedians in the world. Hot off the success of his first hour-long HBO special, Bring the Pain, which he won two Emmy Awards, he also hosted his own weekly late-night talk show, for which he picked up another primetime Emmy. Chris Tucker might have been the king of movies, but when it came to the stage, no one could mess with Chris Rock in the late 90s. Filmed at the famous Apollo Theater in front of a sold-out crowd, Bigger and Blacker proved that Bring the Pain wasn't a fluke. We were looking at the next comedy superstar. Here's why Chris Rock's bullet control joke is genius. After greeting the audience, he begins the special by posing the question, what the hell is up with these white kids shooting up the school? I'm getting in the elevator and these two high school white boys tried to get on with me. And I just dove off. I said, like, y'all ain't killing me. I am scared of young white boys. If you white and under 21, I am running for the hill. U.S. gun laws have been debated for decades and haven't changed much despite the fact that it is the leading cause of death of children in the U.S. as of 2020, according to the New England Journal of Medicine. Even though the United States is home to only 5% of the world's population, about 31% of the world's mass shootings have happened in America. The special was released in July 1999, most likely filmed a few months before. During that time, the country was still healing from what was the deadliest high school shooting in the United States history, the Columbine High School Massacre. Senior students Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold would murder 12 students and one teacher on April 20th, 1999. 21 additional people were injured by gunshots. The pair originally planned on the massacre being a bombing first and a shooting second. However, the bombs would fail to detonate, leading Harris and Klebold to launch a shooting attack. The first shots were fired around 11.19 a.m. outside and would eventually end in the library of the school, ending in Harris and Klebold's suicide shortly after noon. Killing people in the morning, that ain't right! It's that trench coat mafia! That trench, we, no one would play with us! We had no friends in the trench coat mafia! As far as the motive for the attack goes, no real reason was given. The media couldn't figure out why and began placing their own speculation as to what led to the massacre. Bullying, video games, music were what they came up with while targeting jocks and minorities were brought into the conversation as well. During reports, many assumed that the duo were part of the trench coat mafia, which was a small group of outcasts that hung out together, prided themselves on being different from the jocks who were bullying them, and some of the members who wore heavy black trench coats. In order to honor the lives lost during the shooting, the Washington Post published an article in April 2019 clearing up some of the myths and rumors that were reported shortly after. The most common myth was that Harris and Klebold were not a part of the trench coat mafia. There were several students at the school who identified them as part of the group. The shooters who turned Columbine High School into an unspeakable landscape of carnage yesterday were members of a small clique of outcasts who always wore black trench coats and present their entire adolescence deep inside the morose subculture of gothic fantasy, their fellow students said, the Washington Post. By several accounts, the group was also interested in the occult, mutilation, shock rocker Marilyn Manson, and Adolf Hitler, the Denver Post. Investigators now believe that among the dozen or so students in the group were the people responsible for yesterday's mass shooting at the high school, the New York Times. It was Peter Langman, a psychologist who had studied high school shootings, who disproved this. In a 2008 report, he wrote that because Columbine was such a large school with over 2,000 students, many didn't know the shooters or only knew them as kids who sometimes wore trench coats. As a result, people assumed that Harris and Klebold were part of the trench coat mafia. This assumption is wrong. The rumors came from a group of mostly senior students who sometimes referred to themselves as the trench coat mafia. Harris and Klebold knew a few of these students, but they weren't considered members. According to the Washington Post, they didn't appear in a photo with the mafia in a 1998 yearbook picture. Most of the students had graduated a year before the shooting. Hey, I saw the yearbook picture. It was six of them. I didn't have six friends in high school. I don't got six friends now. <laughs> Shit, that's three on three with a half court. 
Whenever a tragedy like this happens, people try to come up with an answer as to why someone will do something like this. The labels of outcasts, isolated individuals, and loners were thrown at Harrison Klebold. Some thought that the attack was their revenge for being bullied in school. According to reports, while in the library, one of the shooters ordered all of the jocks to stand up. During the encounter, Klebold even pointed his Tech 9 at a student and asked if he was a jock. The student said no, and Klebold said, well, that's good. We don't like jocks. Everybody want to know what the kids was listening to. What, what kind of music was they listening to? Or what kind of movies was they watching? Who gives a fuck what they was watching? Whatever happened to crazy? <laughs> Whenever a mass shooter is able to enact their plan, music, TV, video games, and movies are often to blame, as people are often looking for a scapegoat. Marilyn Manson took a lot of the blame, as it was reported that the Columbine shooters were fans of his work. Addressing the accusations of his influence in a 1999 Rolling Stone interview, Manson said, when it comes down to who's to blame for the high school murders in Littleton, Colorado, throw a rock and you'll hit someone who's guilty. We're the people who sit back and tolerate children owning guns. And we're the ones who tune in and watch the up to the minute details of what they do with them. It wasn't long before the shooting became a pop culture phenomenon, referenced in songs and other forms of media. In 2005, an independent video game developer released Super Columbine Massacre RPG, which allowed users to imagine themselves as the Columbine shooters and act out violence. The massacre would inspire dozens of copycat killings, otherwise known as the Columbine Effect. When I was a kid, I used to separate the crazy kids from everybody. When I was a kid, the crazy kids went to school on a little ass bus. They had a class at the end of the school, and they used to get out of school at 2.30. Just in case they went crazy, they would only hurt other crazy kids. According to CNN, Harris plotted the attack through his journals. In one version, including escaping to a foreign country or hijacking a plane at the Denver airport and crashing it into New York City. If by some weird as ish luck, me and Klebold survive and escape, we will move to some island somewhere or maybe Mexico, New Zealand, or some exotic place where Americans can't get us. If there isn't such a place, then we will hijack the hell out of a lot of bombs and crash a plane into NYC with us inside, hiring away as we go down. Harris Journal. Klebold kept a journal where he mentioned going on a killing spree and both foreshadowing the massacre in their schoolwork. In December 1997, a year and a half before the attack, Harris wrote a paper on school shootings called Guns in School and a poem from the perspective of a bullet. While Klebold wrote a story about a man killing students, that particular writing caught the attention of the teacher who alerted his parents. Then, of course, there were the basement tapes. Shot in Harris' family basement, Harris and Klebold recorded five videotapes with their school equipment. Only two videos, Hitman for Hire and Rampart Range, were released in full. A third video titled Radioactive Clothing was released in parts. The other videos detailed their plans and reasons for the shooting, but were destroyed for fear of inspiring future massacres. And we was all safe, we was all safe. Then the world coming to an end. <laughs> world coming to an end. You're gonna have little white kids saying, I wanna go to a black school where it's safe. Gun control is a never ending topic here in America with solutions being offered whenever a tragedy happens. It seems like we've heard it all, but still no progress. Whether it's banning all assault rifles altogether, raising the age to buy a gun from 18 to 21 or 21 to 25, background checks for purchasers, longer waiting periods, it's all been discussed. And Rock knows this. And everybody talking about gun control, gotta get rid of the guns. Fuck that, I like guns. You got a gun, you don't have to work out. You got pets, I got pets. Here, Rock provides a fresh perspective to help fight gun violence in America since we've been trying to come up with a solution for decades. You don't need no gun control. You know what you need? We need some bullet control. We need to, make, we need to control the bullets. That's right. I think all bullets should cost $5,000. $5,000 for a bullet. You know why? Because if a bullet costs $5,000, there'll be no more innocent bystanders. <laughs> yeah. 
In the state of Georgia, anyone with $15 can buy a bag of 50 bullets, no questions asked. Rock's suggested price may be a little inflated, but essentially, the price of bullets should be raised. If the price went up from $15 a bag to $15,000 a bag and the taxes increased substantially, I'm sure there will be a lot more discernment with how people use their bullets. And people will think before they kill somebody if a bullet costs $5,000, man, I would blow your fucking head off if I could afford it. RJ Lehman of rstreet.org did the math to find a reasonable number for the cost of bullets, which currently range from 14 to 99 cents. He used social costs as a factor to raise the tax price per bullet. The government already taxes about 10% on firearms, but they don't consider the social cost of $43 billion that it costs the country to support public health that is jeopardized due to gun recklessness. To offset the cost, the tax on bullets would need to be raised by 742%, which would increase the bullet cost to a range between $1.22 to $8.36. Twitter user Kevin Adams said, I honestly don't know why extremely onerous and expensive permits aren't Aren't preferable to bans. Like 5k a year per semi-auto weapon, some rich a-holes would love the exclusivity of it and would fight to keep it that way. I'm gonna give me another job, I'm gonna start saving some money, and you a dead man. So even if you get shot by a straight bullet, you won't have to go to no doctor to get it taken out. Whoever shot you, take their bullet back. I believe you got my property. According to the Council on Foreign Relations, the Gun Control Act of 1968 prohibits people under 18, convicted criminals, the mentally disabled, dishonorably charged military personnel, and other potentially dangerous individuals from purchasing firearms. In 1993, the Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act mandated background checks for all unlicensed individuals purchasing a firearm from a federally authorized dealer. Even though these federal laws apply to all 50 states, there is still some flexibility that states have when it comes to gun mandates. For example, in May 2021, the governor of Tennessee passed a law allowing people to carry guns without a license. Federal law requires people buying handguns from licensed dealers to be at least 21. But in Texas and in most other states, 18-year-olds can purchase what are known as long guns, which include assault rifles. The topic of gun control is something that Rock has continued to touch on. In his latest special tambourine, Rock took note that most mass shooters live with their mothers. His solution? In order to get a gun in the United States, you should be required to have a mortgage. All the mass shooters, none of them own homes. <laughs> in the United States of America, you should have to have a mortgage. As of mid-2022, there were no federal laws banning semi-automatic assault weapons, military-style 50 caliber rifles, handguns, or large-capacity magazines. There should be a limit on how many bullets can be purchased at any one time. Purchasers should be required to be fingerprinted and photographed for records. The gun which the bullets are being purchased for should be bought in upon purchase. However, we are still living in a country that drags their feet on making any real change, even 23 years after Chris Rock's suggestion. And that is why Chris Rock's bullet control joke is genius. Stay up to date with the latest news in comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Tatiana LaJoy.